Well, we've got a pretty good group out here. We're just spread out. We're on the southern basin of Lake Winnipeg, and it's good to be back. You know, and we fished with Matt Cornell here a few years ago and had a great time. The guy's just a fish head and pretty busy guide up here, and so we felt lucky just to be able to tag along here and kind of get pointed in the right direction. And so Matt's running around with a bunch of guys that he's guiding, and we're just kind of out on the edge here looking and you know we're only in six seven feet of water and what's cool about Lake Winnipeg is that there's not a lot of structure out here these fish can be anywhere and these schools are massive and so it's just a matter of drilling holes until you feel like you're getting warm and some days it's a lot of work but if you love walleyes and you like to ice fish for walleyes I don't know if there's anything that beats Lake Winnipeg You know, Lake Winnipeg is a massive body of water. It's one of the largest lakes in North America. And so when you look at all this water, you know, the amazing thing is that a lot of the fishing, a lot of the walleye fishing takes place in the southern bays in the southern end of Lake Winnipeg, and more specifically out in front of the Red River. And so where the Red River dumps into Lake Winnipeg, it's not just one primary channel. There's, it's almost like it's braided where there's several offshoots, several channels coming in. It's almost like a delta. And so you have all this water coming in on the southern end, and in the fall, you know, the shiners pull up into the Red River. And then in the springtime, these walleyes will pull up into the Red River to spawn. And so, you know, a lot of the activity happens out in front of the Red River where it dumps into Lake Winnipeg. And so the southern basin is really where it's at. It's where, you know, most of the fishing activity is. And so if you don't have a lot of equipment, you can go out here with guides. And there's a lot of great guides on this lake. But if you go out on your own, definitely make sure you have a GPS. Make sure you have a map chip. And so the best map chip that I know of for Lake Winnipeg is the Angling Edge map chip. It's, you know, they're made up here in Manitoba. And the thing about this is not a lot of structure, but at the same time, you'll see just these general contours where these fish might be running a three foot contour, they might be running a seven foot contour or a 12 foot contour. And a lot of times, you know, there's some randomness to this in the sense these fish can be anywhere. You know, these, these fish are just moving all the time. But at the same time, GPS is useful for not just getting back and, you know, from a safety perspective, but also as far as just following these contours because you'll see these big inside turns and you'll see some dips and troughs and, and, uh, the structure can be really subtle out here, but uh, definitely something you can do. You just have to put in the work, you know, and, and not be intimidated by all this water. You just go out and pick an area, fish it. If nothing's happening, you just keep moving and make big moves, you know, fish one hole for half an hour, just see if there's a flow of fish in that area and then move 200 yards, 400 yards, 500 yards, make big moves to break down this water because these schools of fish are big, you know, and you, you can sit in one hole in an area and run traffic if there's fish around, but there's no fish around, you're gonna know in half an hour, you know, whether the area is dry. And so make those big moves. And when you're fishing with a team of people where you've got multiple anglers that you're working together and networking, it really makes it a lot easier to find and stay on these fish. Oh, here comes one, come on. Oh, come on. Oh, <laughs> got it, got it. There we go. Boy, they're just thick fish. Look at that. <laughs> the green back. Grab my pliers here. Oh, I want, the thing I love about these fish up here is a lot of times when they hit a lure, they choke on it. Birdless hooks pop right out. Nice. All right, get her in the water. You know what I love the most about fishing Lake Winnipeg is your reality gets distorted in the sense that you can come out here and say you catch 10 fish that are all less than 23 inches. You get back to the hotel at night, people are singing the blues because they didn't get a master angler that day. If you're anywhere else on the planet, a fish like that is a great fish, but up here, <laughs> there's a lot bigger and everybody knows it.
Got her. Yeah, good fish, good fish. Shaking her head, big head shakes. There she is. She's in the hole. Oh, that is what we're talking about. That is an absolutely gorgeous specimen of a Lake Winnipeg greenback walleye. Certainly the standard that we expect to catch in a day of fishing up here. Gorgeous. I've been guiding on Lake Winnipeg now since 2006. Um, Obviously, Lake Winnipeg is the 9,000 square mile elephant in the room when it comes to big walleye. So it's, it's pretty easy to love in that respect because, you know, on any given day, there's multiple 30 inch walleye being caught on this lake in the South Basin where we're fishing right now. The fact that it is a structureless lake is something that drives people bananas a lot of the time because, you know, you're almost throwing darts at a map just to see where you can start and the saying goes that you're only as good as your last good spot on Lake Winnipeg because you can't just pick a piece of structure and say I'm going to go try this rock pile or I'm going to go try this hole. You really have to have your finger on the pulse of what's been going on and so it, it makes you be aggressive, it makes you really look at the fishing you had and it, and it it really sucks the best out of you in terms of getting your clients on good fish because you, you really have to keep following those fish and putting every ounce of energy you have into it. And I, I just love that about it. I go down, I bang it on the bottom, he comes back, comes up, takes a look at it, follows it for about a foot and a half, turns around, goes back down. Oh, look at there, Lake Winnipeg Greenback. He absolutely hammered it. What you come here for? See that one come in. Wow. <laughs> oh man. Ooh, this might be a little bit nicer fish too. <laughs> oh, look at that one. <laughs> wow. That one just came out of nowhere. I mean, I didn't even pick it up on the Vexlar, you know, when it came in and it just ate that. This fish here, many bodies of water. Um, it'd be an absolute trophy fish. And, um, you know, that's why we come here is to catch trophies like this. So we're going to let this one go and get her back and hopefully uh, it'll grow up and we'll get a bigger one. What I'm using today and what I really like to use, this is the Super Leech, you know, half and three eighths ounce. I'm using the three eighths today. They got a really strong hook on them. They're a big hook too. With the barbless, you got to pinch the barbs, but with these bigger hooks, you can really drive that into the fish's mouth. I'm using a 38 inch medium action katana rod. Um, it's, you know, got some good backbone. Uh, fish in the shallow water, they don't have a lot of opportunity to fight and run away, but keeping pressure on them, keep that hook, that line tight, and keep that hook buried in their mouth, that's the key to uh, landing these fish. So, you know, you know, don't know if you're going to catch a 16 incher or a 30 incher, so um, always, uh, you know, Keep the line tight and uh, keep keep reeling. You know, we're fishing as a team out here, and that's pretty important. You know, you come out here as a group of people, especially when we can fish outside like this. We can communicate and see what each other are doing. So I haven't marked a fish now here in probably 20 minutes, half an hour maybe. You know, I was marking them pretty good earlier. Caught a few fish. Scott came in behind me. He just caught a few. And so what I'm going to do now is I'm just going to leapfrog and I'm just going to go to the other side of them here. And you know, sometimes these schools might be 200 yards long or bigger. Sometimes it's just a pot of fish that's 20 yards long, but it just seems like you just have to move and groove. You can't fall in love with one hole.
But yeah, the closest thing you could compare this to, I think, would be like trolling Lake Erie. We'll drill a hole here and give her 15 minutes, just see what swims by. And if nothing, we'll just make another big move here and see if we can get back on them. But sometimes it's a lot of work out here. I think if you were to drill a hole out here and sit long enough anywhere out here, you'd probably mark a fish or have fish come underneath you. But usually you can't go wrong just moving, 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 moving. It's like the more you work, the harder you work, the more you get, the luckier you get. Fish on. There's another one. Boy, that fish, <laughs> some of these fish hit it so hard. That's just fun. Come on up here, this is a good fish. Here she comes. Oh yeah. <laughs> Look at that mouth. <laughs> Look at that mouth. Oh yeah. <laughs> That's a nice walleye. Tika minnow. It's been kind of a gray, cloudy day. You know, talking to people that are out here yesterday. Boy, that's a beautiful fish. You know, it's gold, metallics, but kind of overcast day to day, so I went with paint today, just bright colors. Yeah, just look at the the girth on these fish. They're just so wide across the back. It just never ceases to amaze me how these fish on Lake Winnipeg are built. Fun fishing. One of my favorite trips to do. Wasn't able to get up here last winter, obviously. So it's great to get back up here. You know, so it's kind of a deal where we've got a weather change rolling in. There's rain in the forecast. And yesterday it was bright, sunny. Yesterday, talking to people that were out here, the fish were biting pretty good. They were, you know, fish were aggressive or people were, you know, working a flutter spoon, you know, three feet, four feet up off the bottom. These fish are just coming in and cranking it. Today it's a little bit different day. We're marking fish and they're not, you know, they're not accelerating. They're not shooting up off the bottom hard. And so I put a tika minnow on and a couple things here, you know, it's kind of a gray day, which I'm not a big color person. I think most of the color is just to catch fishermen. But at the same time, there's definitely days where certain colors will work better. And I also believe that uh, you can use the wrong color in the right spot and catch fish. You can use the right color in the wrong spot and not catch fish. You know, so as a general rule of thumb, on sunny days, I like to use the chromes, the golds, the metallic colors. But then on these gray, cloudy, low ceiling days, a lot of times that's when I prefer the painted lures. Got one coming in there. Come on, eat that spoon, eat it. There it is. Yep, I'd say that shallow water stuff is fun. Oh, there he goes. <laughs> oh, yes. I say there, you know, we haven't hit the mother load, no giant yet, but uh, I'll take these all day long catching fish like this. You know, fishing in shallow water, seven and a half, eight feet of water. And fish, you set the hook and they come up and like they bounce off the bottom of the ice and uh, it's a fun little battle. All right, back it's going to go and catch them again. Yes. All right, we're having a pretty good time up here. Got up here earlier this morning, start fishing, and uh, just been bouncing around. And the, the key on Winnipeg is, you know, drill holes, move around, and um, you'll start marking some fish and catching some fish and stay in that spot, and they move on, and just, you know, make bigger moves too, taking, you know, 50, 100 yard moves when you're, uh, you know, making your moves, not the small moves, take and make them larger and then 
condense them down if you're on the fish. So moving around is key. Literally saw that fish and crushed it. <laughs> Another one. Been a good day so far. The old leech flutter spoon. They're liking it today. Beautiful eater here out on Lake Winnipeg. It's a, it's a nice fish, beautiful fish. That green iridescent color, just absolutely gorgeous. Let's let her go. And the tail waves goodbye. I love it. Let's get another one. Had these fish are coming in a foot and a half off the bottom. Oh, there he is. It's funny how, you know, you see the fish, they disappear out of the cone, and then all of a sudden they turn around and come back and just whack it. Don't even see them, they just get you. Whoa! <laughs> Active little devils. Ah, oh, man, now they got it right in the beak. This is kind of, it's been fun. I'm sliming myself up. I'm uh, all walleye slime on my suit from catching so many fish. You know, spending the time on the water, that's uh, kind of the key here too, is we get out here, you know, we got here out here at sunrise and, you know, we're gonna fish till sunset and uh, putting your time in in the water and it, uh, it uh, pays off. Oh man, let that baby go. Yes, there you go. So, yeah, it's been a blast. I say I'm just uh, catching a lot of fish and happy, and uh, I'm gonna go back and catch another one. Oh, there he is. Finally, worked that one for a little bit. Oh, there she is. Come on up here. Oh, come here. Oh, she just smacked it. Been changing it up. I've had this fish actually come in on me and didn't hit the glide bait, so I put a just a pinhead that I had rigged up with a piece of shiner on it. Just incredible fish. You know, when you see a picture, you see a video of a greenback, you know right away where it's from. Just beautiful looking fish. Just so unique, there's nothing quite like it. We'll get that fish in the water. There she goes. Let's see if we can get something going here. We're starting to mark some fish again. When you look at Lake Winnipeg, you know, it's big water. And, you know, the presentations as far as the lures, you know, a lot of times it's a lot bigger, and a lot bolder than, you know, anything that we do on inland water, especially in the States, you know. And so, you know, you look at big rattle baits, you know, rip and wraps, live targets, you know, the loud rattle baits are an option. Big flutter spoons are also really popular on Lake Winnipeg. So this is a Clam Pro Tackle Peg Flutter Spoon, but just a big flashy bait. A lot of times we're putting a full minnow or a full shiner on the back of it. Super Leech Flutter Spoon is just a great lure. I mean, that's this has caught a lot of fish on Lake Winnipeg for us. You know, sometimes if the bite's off a little bit, I'll switch up to just a pinhead minnow. Then obviously the big glide baits, you know, the big Tika minnows, you know, but big thing with all these baits, obviously when, when you're fishing in Manitoba, you gotta pinch down the barbs, and a lot of times we'll upsize the hook. And so if a lure doesn't have a really big hook on it, especially in shallow water, you know, upsize the hook, use a big hook. You, know, you see on this Tika minnow here, you know, we put a lot bigger hook on the bottom here just to keep those fish pinned up a little better. And a lot of times when we're tipping with a minnow, especially on the spoons, you know, use a whole minnow. Very seldom we're just using a minnow head, you know. And so use big profiles. A lot of times we're fishing pretty aggressive. We're pounding it in the mud. We're lifting it up. You know, your, your jig and cadence is a lot wilder and a lot more aggressive up here, to, you know, to catch these fish. And I think what it is, these fish are just watering across this abyss of big water. You know, they, they can't be timid if they're gonna if they're going to eat a meal out here. You know, there's just so many fish and there's just... You know, so many predators, these fish are just always on the move. And so fish big, fish bold, fish aggressively, that's usually the key to catching fish on Lake Winnipeg. <laughs>